welcome back to Coco Sleep, a podcast of original children's bedtime stories and meditations designed to make bedtime a dream. Roll out the red carpet. We have some new members of Coco Club to welcome. Martha, Sarah, Paige and Elle, thank you for joining Coco Club. We're so happy to have your support. I hope you all enjoy next week's bonus story. The Dream Givers will be returning. And this time, Orion and Cosmo will have a special helper, Cosmo's little sister, Astrid. She comes up with some truly unique and slightly silly dreams, which I can't wait to share with you. As you all know, I am possibly the world's biggest fan of bedtime stories. And this one I'm going to tell you tonight has a name that is very familiar. In fact, its origins reach right back into the medieval age and it has been reframed and retold across the world in many different ways and languages. Tonight, I'm delighted to bring you our own very special Coco Sleep version, written especially for you. Now close your curtains and turn out the lights. Settle down into bed and close your eyes ready to hear an imaginative tale about a princess called Briar Rose who loves nothing more than snuggling down in her bed and drifting into a deep sleep every night. But one day that all changes and for the first time ever she encounters a rare problem. She can't sleep. No matter what, she simply cannot do it. She asks her mother what to do, and she suggests that Briar Rose seeks help from a fairy who lives nearby. Briar Rose takes her mother's advice and sets off to find the fairy. So let's join the princess on her journey and hear how she once again learns to drift easily into peaceful sleep. This is Sleeping Beauty by Gillian Rogerson. Once upon a time, in a kingdom far away, there lived a kind-hearted king and queen. They were generous people and loved helping the villagers who lived nearby. The king and queen were always ready to help the fairies of the enchanted forest too. They considered the villagers and fairies to be their very dearest of friends, and the villagers and the fairies felt the same way about the royal couple. The king and queen often held parties to celebrate many events, including their friends' birthdays or weddings, when someone new moved into the area, or for any reason at all that called for a celebration. They held the parties in their palace and would welcome everyone warmly into their home. The day came when there was an extra special reason for a celebration for the king and queen the birth of their daughter, Briar Rose. She was the light of their lives, and they counted themselves to be very fortunate people indeed. They were so busy looking after the new baby that they didn't have time to think about a party. Their friends in the village and forest were absolutely delighted about the birth of the princess. And with help from the staff at the palace, they arranged for a surprise party to be held for the king and queen. Invitations were sent out across the land, and everyone was told to keep the party a secret, as they wanted it to be a surprise for their kind-hearted king and queen. The day of the surprise party arrived, and as the king and queen knew nothing about it, They took their usual morning stroll around the village as they normally did and said hello to everyone. Their walk took longer than normal because the king was holding the new baby in his arms and everyone wanted to say hello to the little princess. Even though Briar Rose was only a few weeks old, when someone looked at her and smiled, she would gaze softly into their eyes as though she loved them with all her heart. As they walked through the village, the queen noticed that everyone was wearing their very best clothes that morning, but she didn't say anything. After saying hello to everyone in the village, 
the king and queen headed into the enchanted forest and said good morning to the fairies who lived there. Like the villagers, the fairies gazed at the baby in wonder, and the little princess looked back at them with love in her eyes. The queen noticed that the fairies were wearing extra twinkly glitter that morning, but she didn't say anything. Once the royal family had said hello to everyone, they headed back towards the palace, completely unaware that it had been transformed inside. The king and queen reached the palace and went inside. They walked into the great hall and came to a sudden stop. Their eyes widened in surprise as they stared at the room in astonishment. Bright banners and glittering balloons hung from the ceiling. Silk ribbons wound around the marble pillars. Tables and chairs were set out across the huge floor and topped with plates and glasses. Each chair was decorated with silk ribbons. A huge dining table had been brought out from the attic and was standing at the back of the room. It was covered in silver dishes that contained a variety of mouth-watering food. In the middle of the table was a big cake. The king and queen shared a confused look. The king said, Is there a party today? I don't remember organising one. Did you organise this, my love? Is it someone's birthday or anniversary? The queen replied, I didn't organise this and I don't know anyone who's got a celebration coming up. Let's take a closer look at the cake on the table. I think I can see some icing on it. They walked over to the table. Briar Rose was still snuggled cosily in her father's arms. The royal family looked at the cake. The iced words read, Congratulations on the birth of your daughter. The king frowned, still not sure of what was going on. The queen smiled gently and said, I think the kind villagers and fairies have organised this for us. I did notice they were dressed in their best clothes and glitter, How very kind and thoughtful of them. At that moment, the queen's maid entered the room. She rushed over to them and declared, Oh, your majesties, I was supposed to meet you at the front door and lead you into the hall. The queen gave her maid a kind look and said, I think the cake explains everything. What a lovely surprise for us. Did you help getting everything ready? The maid nodded and explained how all the staff had helped too. She said, I do hope it's okay to have a party for you and the princess. The king and queen said it was more than okay. It was the most wonderful of surprises. And they thanked the maid and asked her to give their thanks to the rest of the staff. The baby princess gurgled as though adding her thanks. The maid said, I'll certainly pass on your thanks. Everyone wanted to welcome Briar Rose, and it was a joy to prepare this celebration for you. The party will begin shortly. The queen said, In that case, We must get changed into our party clothes immediately so that we're ready to greet our guests. The royal family hastened up the marble steps. They returned minutes later, dressed in their finery. Briar Rose was wearing a delicate lace dress that had been passed down through the family for many years. The royal staff were bustling about in the hall, making sure everything looked perfect. 
The king and queen took some time to thank everyone and insisted they join in with the celebrations. The doorbell chimed out, and moments later, the first guests arrived bearing gifts for the little princess. The king and queen were touched by their generosity, and their hearts overflowed with love. Each guest gazed upon the princess, who was now in her mother's arms. Briar Rose gazed back at everyone, again with love shining in her little eyes. More and more guests arrived, and the great hall was soon full of chatting people and fluttering fairies. An orchestra of local musicians appeared and began to play soft music. The party was soon in full swing. Guests took seats at the tables. Others helped themselves to the delicious food. Some of the guests started to dance. A while later, the cake was cut and huge slices were handed out to everyone. The little princess watched it all, a baby smile on her face. Some time later, the king and queen proceeded to open the presents. The villagers and fairies gathered around them. The villagers had created beautiful handmade gifts, including toys, clothes and soft blankets. The king and queen thanked them over and over again and proclaimed they had never seen such beautiful items before and would treasure them all. It was time for the fairies to give their gifts. The first fairy, by the name of Twinkletoes, said, I will teach Briar Rose how to dance and we will whirl and twirl around the trees in the enchanted forest. The other fairies followed and promised to teach Briar Rose many things, such as singing, painting and reading. Briar Rose gazed open-eyed at the fairies, as though she was taking in every word they were saying. The king thanked the fairies and said they were very kind. The fairies promised to always be there for the princess whenever she needed them. The queen said softly, That is the greatest gift of all. Thank you. Her smile faded a little and she cast a quick look around the room. She said, someone is missing. Where is Sleepy Wings? Did she receive an invitation? The other fairies nodded and said Sleepy Wings had told them she was looking forward to the party. The fairies had reminded her about it just before they had set off towards the palace. Twinkletoes said fondly, She's probably fallen asleep somewhere. You know how much she loves sleeping. Sometimes I think she could sleep for a hundred years. I'm sure she'll turn up soon. She won't want to miss this party. The queen nodded, but a look of concern remained on her face. She handed the baby princess to her husband and said she would check on the missing fairy. She'd take her some cake too, in case there was none left later. The queen quickly collected a slice of cake and wrapped it carefully in a cotton napkin. The queen left the palace and headed towards the enchanted forest. She entered the forest and walked along the sun-dappled path towards the fairy house where Sleepy Wings lived. When she arrived, the queen found the little fairy snoozing peacefully in a hammock strung between two bushes. Sleepy Wings looked so very peaceful in her slumber 
that the queen didn't want to wake her up. She placed the cake on the doorstep of the fairy house and began to walk away. Sleepy wings stirred in her hammock and opened her eyes. She smiled sleepily at the queen and said hello. The queen said, I hope I haven't disturbed you. I was leaving some cake on your doorstep. It's from the party celebrations at the palace. I'm going back there now. Do you want to come with me? Sleepy Wings yawned and said she would do that. She apologised for being late. She had decided to take a short nap before the party and had fallen fast asleep. The Queen and Sleepy Wings headed to the palace and went inside. Sleepy Wings flew over to the princess and said, I will bestow upon you a peaceful sleep for every night of your life. The king chuckled and said their daughter was already sleeping well throughout the night and he'd started to call her Sleeping Beauty. Sleepy Wing said, That is good news, especially for such a young baby. If that ever changes, Briar Rose can visit me in the forest and I will help her. The party continued throughout the day and into the night. The memory of the wonderful surprise party stayed with the royal family and their guests for a long time and was often spoken about fondly. The years passed by and Briar Rose grew older. Just like her parents, she loved spending time with the villagers and offered her help whenever she could. She also loved being with the fairies in the enchanted forest, playing games and dancing with them. She attended the local school and made many friends there. Briar Rose continued to sleep peacefully every night, just like she had as a baby. But there came a time when that changed. It started on a particularly busy day for the princess. Briar Rose had been out of the palace all day long. After finishing school for the day, she had stopped at the village and helped people with one thing and another, and then she'd visited the fairies and danced and sang with them for a while. When she'd returned to the palace, she had taken dinner with her family and talked about their day. But when Briar Rose went to bed that night, her mind was full of busy thoughts that just wouldn't settle down. She thought about the new dances she had learned with the fairies and wondered if she was doing them right. She thought about the farmers in the village and if it was time to help them with the apple harvest yet. She thought about her schoolwork and wondered if she would ever get the hang of fractions. Perhaps she could ask her friend Samuel if he could help her with that. Briar Rose stared at the ceiling as the thoughts continued to tumble over and over through her mind. Eventually, she drifted off to sleep. But the same thing happened the next night, and the night after that. It was like her thoughts were queuing up in her mind, just waiting for her to lie down in bed at night. And as soon as that happened, the thoughts would jump into her head, wanting her attention. Her parents noticed their daughter yawning throughout the day and asked her what was wrong. When Briar Rose told them about her sleeping issues, Her mother said, Why don't you visit Sleepy Wings? Her gift to you when you were born was a peaceful night's sleep. You didn't need it at the time, but it seems you do now. 
Briar Rose said she would visit Sleepy Wings straight away. She knew where the fairy lived, but hadn't spoken to her much, because Sleepy Wings was often asleep when Briar Rose visited the enchanted forest. The princess left the palace and headed towards the forest. Her head became full of thoughts along the way. Briar Rose was so absorbed in what was going on in her head that she almost walked straight past Sleepy Wings, who was awake and sitting in a little chair outside her house. Sleepy Wings called out, Hey there, Briar Rose. Be careful where you're going. You're about to bump into a tree. Briar Rose stopped walking and shook her head at the tree she'd almost bumped into. She walked over to Briar Rose and let out a soft sigh. (sighs) Hello, sleepy wings. Thank you for the warning. I was too busy thinking thoughts to watch where I was going. Sleepy Wings gave the princess a long look and said, Are those thoughts keeping you up at night too? Briar Rose nodded and said she didn't know how to get rid of them, and the more she thought about them, the more thoughts floated into her head. Sleepy Wings nodded in understanding and said it happened to many people. But, luckily, Sleepy Wings knew how to get rid of such troublesome thoughts. You do? the princess asked. How? Sleepy Wings got up from her chair and said it would be easier to show Briar Rose rather than tell her. Follow me, the fairy said. We'll start by going for a walk through the forest. Try not to bump into any trees, she grinned at Briar Rose. Briar Rose grinned back and said she would try her best not to. She had many questions for the fairy concerning her never-ending thoughts, but before she could ask even one, the fairy asked her a question. Briar Rose Can you tell me what you see as we walk along? Briar Rose was surprised at the question, but she took a look at her surroundings and said she could see the trees and the sky and the grass. Tell me more, the fairy said. Are the trees all the same? And what about the sky? Are there any clouds up there? The princess slowed her steps and took a longer look. She told the fairy that some of the trees reached towards the sky and some had low branches that swept the ground. The leaves were all different shades of green. Some were like ripened apples and some were a pale, delicate green like the eyes of emerald the singing fairy. The princess stopped walking and gazed at the sky. She said there were a lot of fluffy clouds, and one of them looked like a dragon with smoke curling out of its mouth. She smiled and said, That one next to the dragon looks like a sheep jumping over a horse Oh, look over there. That cloud is shaped like my mother's favourite hat. Briar Rose gazed at the sky some more, her smile soft and relaxed. When she looked back at the fairy, Sleepy Wings was smiling too. Sleepy Wings suggested they carry on walking and go towards the stream up ahead. She asked Briar Rose to keep looking closely at what was around them. The fairy added, 
Can you tell me what you hear and smell too? Briar Rose nodded, not sure why Sleepy Wings was asking her that. As they continued on their walk, Briar Rose took her time and really looked at the trees, the flowers, and the animals who lived in the forest. She noticed the sun slanting through the branches and moving across the grass in a mesmerizing dance. She heard the soft buzz of a bumblebee as it nuzzled into the velvety petals of a ruby-red rose. The bees buzzing mingled with the sweet songs coming from the birds in the trees. Briar Rose gently inhaled the relaxing scent of lavender plants and trailed her fingers through patches of long grass. The princess became more and more relaxed as she strolled through the forest. She let out a soft sigh of happiness. They walked on, and Briar Rose soon heard the soothing babble of the stream as it tumbled over the rocks. It was like music and it blended perfectly with the other sounds coming from the forest, like nature's lullaby. The fairy and the princess stopped at the side of the stream and watched it flow gently around shiny rocks. Briar Rose noticed golden fish swimming leisurely through the water. She gazed at them as they swam downstream. She saw frogs lying on their backs on sun-warmed rocks at the side of the stream. Their hands were behind their heads and they were gazing softly at the sky. Briar Rose relaxed more and more as she absorbed the soothing scene. Sleepy wings fluttered over to a large rock and invited Briar Rose to join her. Briar Rose sat down next to the fairy and placed her hands on the rock, noticing how smooth and warm it was. Sleepy wings looked at the slow flowing water a peaceful smile on her face. She began to take some deep, relaxing breaths. Briar Rose instinctively copied the fairy and took some deep breaths too. It was so very relaxing, sitting there on the warm rock and doing nothing except watching the stream flow by. Sleepy Wings turned to Briar Rose and asked how she was feeling. Briar Rose replied, Very relaxed and happy. All those thoughts I had earlier have gone. She smiled at the fairy. Have you used magic on me? The fairy shook her head and said, The magic is within you and has always been there. It's a matter of quietening your mind. You can still the thoughts in your head at any time by slowing down and really looking at what's around you. Taking long, slow breaths helps too. You can also count your breaths if you want to. If you take time during your day to quieten your mind, you will fall asleep more easily at night. Really? Briar Rose asked. Is it really that easy? 
with the softest look in her eyes, Sleepy Wings replied, It works for me, and others too. It helps if you practice quietening several times throughout the day. Sometimes even a minute of slowing down and silently counting your breaths will help. Why don't you try that now? Briar Rose focused softly on the stream and took some long, deep breaths and silently counted them. One, breathing in. Two, breathing out. Three, breathing in. Four, breathing out. Five, breathing in. Six, breathing out. Briar Rose smiled at the fairy and said that had helped, and she felt even more relaxed. The princess and the fairy stayed a little while longer on the warm rock, not talking, just looking at the slowly moving river. After a while, Sleepy Wings started to yawn. Briar Rose yawned too and said she should be getting back to the palace. Sleepy Wings gave her a sleepy nod and said, I'd better get back to my home too, but I'm too tired to walk and I'm too tired to fly. The kind princess said, You can sit on my shoulder, and I'll carry you home. Sleepy Wings was touched by her thoughtfulness and said thank you. The princess lowered her shoulder, and the sleepy fairy climbed onto it. She snuggled up closer to the princess and closed her eyes. Briar Rose stood up and walked away from the stream. She made her way through the forest, careful not to disturb the fairy on her shoulder, who was now fast asleep. On the way through the forest, Briar Rose looked closely at her surroundings and saw many things she'd never noticed before. She kept practicing her deep breathing and a feeling of peacefulness flowed through her. It wasn't long before Briar Rose reached Sleepy Wing's fairy house. She carefully scooped the snoozing fairy off her shoulder and placed her snugly into her hammock. She tucked a little blanket around the fairy, whispered, thank you, and then continued on her way. By the time Briar Rose reached the palace, she felt very relaxed and happy. She also felt very tired and told her parents she was going to have an early night. She gave them a sleepy wave and headed to her room. Very soon, Briar Rose was snuggled up in her cosy bed, feeling all warm and peaceful. She remembered Sleepy Wing's words and silently counted her breaths and slowly breathed in and out. Briar Rose gently drifted into a deep, deep sleep.